Okay, we'll call to order the Elk Creek Fire Protection District Pension Board of Trustees regular meeting Thursday, July 9th, 2015 at 1808 hours. Director Fox. Sir. Do you want to see the question? Fox. Fox. Yes. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call of members. Let the record show all are present with the exception of Scott Aarons. Any uh, additions or deletions to the agenda? Good. I'm good. Fine. Okay. Move the agenda to be approved. All right. Second. Motion made and second to approve the agenda as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Review the April 9th, 2015 regular meeting minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, will take us to new business. First item will be the call for trustee nominations. Okay, so we have uh, the two uh, positions from the membership and the retirees that uh, are both actually due for uh, re-election. Um, and uh, at this time, what we would look for is a motion uh, from the uh, board to uh, request nominations uh, from all eligible members and retirees, and also to direct an election uh, from those uh, no nominations uh, prior to the, the next meeting. We did have two verbal nominations made uh, at uh, the membership meeting two months ago, uh, and that was to re-elect both uh, uh, nominate both uh, Scott Aronson and Ed Oleski, uh, but we will need to open that to uh, other retirees or members that, that may wish to serve on the board. Okay. Does anybody want to make that I'll motion? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Sir, second. Everybody understand the Chiefs, their motion? Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Let's start that process. Uh, I'm assuming we do a mail out, or do we do, how do we? We'll be, we'll be mailing, uh, we're going to try to do it by email as much as possible, but we've got a few of the retirees who still aren't on email, uh, and, uh, and uh, we'll need to, we'll, so we'll need to mail to the three or four people that uh, we don't have any other way to reach. Okay. So does that mean then in October we, we uh, we actually make the election, is that how it works? Uh, the election will be done by the members and retirees. Okay. Uh, so by the next meeting, uh, be between now and then, uh, we'll have the results of the election. We can forward that to the all, and they'll be uh, sworn in at the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay, that'll take us to the first quarter allocation report. Basically, for information, right? Yeah. Does anyone have any questions on the first quarter allocation report? It's in your packet. I'm good. As long as we're financially stable. Yep, I don't. So I move we approve the allocation report. <laughs> And no action. Really. No action. Yeah, no action. Action. It's, it's, it is what it is. Just the report. Yep. Yeah. Well, in that just case, to give it to you. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Do it. No, just never mind. Do it. No. 
but you don't want to see that. No, in, in response to that, uh, it is it, our the audit did come back reporting that we were uh, funded at 119 percent of requirements. So beautiful, we're in good shape. Yeah. <coughs> That's excellent. Better shape than I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> did you digress? <laughs> 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 I digress. <laughs> did you withdraw your motion, director? I did. I did. <laughs> Roll that roll. I do. All right. Any other new business from the board? I have not. No. Okay. Any old business? See none. Any other business to be brought before the board? See none. A motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Okay. We're going to call to order the Elk Creek Fire Protection District Board of Directors regular meeting Thursday, July 9th, 2015 at 18.15 hours. Director Branch, I you have some pledges. Yes, I will. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. <laughs> the records show that all board members are present. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Good. I'm good as well. I'm good. Motion to accept? Yes, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Review the June 11th, 2015 regular meeting minutes. $192 for the month of May and for the month of June, $118,973 in expenses. There's a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Do you have anything else? I do not. Other than the audit, but we're going to take We'll get to that, yeah. Uh, any financial questions from the board? No. Okay, that'll take us to the chief's report. Okay, um, obviously uh, Deputy Chief Ware is not available for his part, uh, so we'll discuss that as well. Um, the, uh, there's not a lot to report on right now. Uh, basically all of our apparatus are back in service, including the one that was out for body damage from the, the winter. Um, and uh, the only thing that we have outstanding for delivery is the rescue bumper, which has now been pushed back to October. Um, I, we think by the time it gets here, it'll probably be November or December. That seems to be the way that works out. Um, but uh, we anticipate getting that in service sometime during the winter uh, this year. Uh, we do have, we are out to bid on the station remodel project. Uh, the deadline for contractors to uh, submit interest and pick up documents was uh, two days ago and we had a total of uh, five bidders that uh, um, 
put in to, uh, to be considered for the project, and their bids are going to be due on the 15th. Um, we've got uh, some of them coming to look at the, at the building. Uh, I don't know if the other ones are going to bid just from the documents or, or come by as well, but we should find out on the 15th uh, what we're looking at as far as cost on that project. Uh, we did get through our recent uh, hiring and uh, we did end up uh, hiring uh, one of our volunteers into the lieutenant's position. So Tim Godfrey is our new uh, lieutenant uh, on A-shift. And uh, we've got a final chief's interview for one paramedic uh, tomorrow. The other paramedic that passed the process uh, withdrew um, and because he took another job uh, before we were able to uh, complete that. So uh, we are going back out to advertise uh, starting tomorrow uh, again for that other paramedic position and hopefully also to fill the, uh, the other position. Um, we did uh, increase the uh, salary scales for all personnel by 10% and uh, we've re-advertised it at that. And um, so we're hoping that will give us a little bit more interest uh, in uh, filling that position. Um, with the uh, radio project uh, is, uh, is still moving along. We did uh, actually find out that uh, the, um, our channel 2 uh, was, uh, there's a bad cable going up to the antenna, so that stalled uh, the process out uh, for being able to test uh, coverage over the area. Uh, and that's actually holding up all of the mountain area uh, program until they get that uh, uh, fixed. So we've got um, the radio technicians are coming up tomorrow and they're going to climb the tower and replace that antenna and get it back in service. And then they're going to have to redo all the testing. Uh, so that will probably take place over the next week. But uh, it, um, hopefully the, the only thing that will be required there is replacement of the cable. So that's still going to be uh, probably about two thousand dollars to to get that back in service. You have to pay a lot for those guys to climb up that skinny little antenna. <laughs> do we have a direct cable connection from here no, up to the antenna? No. We don't uh, because it's a it's a repeater. So from here we just we just, we just transmit we transmit to it. up right. Yeah. And uh, part of this project that uh, is going to include you know the addition of the microwave, which right. will basically allow us to be able to get, instead of uh, just hitting it from the, uh, you know, from a radio, it'll actually go, you know, essentially what they call radio over internet, yeah. and, uh, and it'll be able to link that way so we don't have to uh, be, you know, within line of sight to activate that repeater. And that'll allow us to link, you know, to all the other sites. So that project's still moving ahead, but, uh, Obviously, we've got, to, we've got to fix that step before we can move on. We still haven't uh, haven't gone ahead and gotten a bid on the replacement of the tower yet, so uh, we're going to wait until we hear from the uh, the uh, North Central Region Homeland Security to find out whether they'll include funding of that in the uh, grant or, or whether we're going to have to come up with the funding for that tower replacement separately. Is that placement going to be a larger tower? Then? It would be the same size tower, but it would bring the, that tower into, <coughs> into compliance. Yep. Um, you know, that tower was put up by ham radio operators, and it's a ham radio tower, not yep. a public safety tower. Yep. So it's not rated for the wind loading that uh, it potentially could. And, you know, obviously the problem there would be if we did have a significant windstorm, we could, you know, lose all communications uh, unless we make sure that that thing is secure enough that uh, it won't blow over. Um, and, uh, you know, as mentioned, I, I just did just get back. We had uh, one engine up in Idaho for the last week. That's the, our first uh, wildland mobilization this year. And uh, Deputy Chief is now, uh, Ware is now up in Alaska uh, as a dozer boss. Uh, so far, this um, has started off being a pretty quiet uh, wildfire season and we expect it not to be as busy uh, as it was in 2012 and 2013 primarily because there's very low fire danger in the south, the east, the Rocky Mountains, the southwest, 
uh, pretty much what we're looking at is California, the Northwest, and Alaska. And um, so, you know, as this summer goes, we're hoping that, uh, you know, our crews can get out and get some more experience uh, during the season. <coughs> we've, we've only had five engines go out of the out of the uh, entire region, which is all of Southwest Colorado and uh, all of Kansas uh, so far this year. So. It's a. It's been a pretty quiet season so far. Do we ever get cold to Canada? No. No, Canada. They've got a lot of things going on up there. They have a lot of fire going on, and uh, the U.S. and Canada have a reciprocal <laughs> agreement. But uh, in my entire career, I mean, even when I was living ten miles from Canada, they didn't invite us. So, huh. yeah. they're Canadian. If they if they can do it, more power to them, I guess. But. Uh, they do come down and help us on occasion, but uh, very rarely call for assistance uh, the other way around. Uh, and then uh, for uh, Chief Ware's report, um, we again had a 101 calls in June, uh, so we are staying, uh, you know, above uh, above previous um, uh, levels, um, uh, pretty much at a on track again for running about uh, 1,200 to 1,250 calls this year. Um, and uh, we did have a total of 42 uh, transports during the month. So that again is still staying uh, about 30% uh, above normal uh, from two years ago. So we, we've definitely seen a, a continued trend that, uh, you know, we're, we're getting more calls and transporting more, more uh, uh, patients. Um, we did have uh, Platte Canyon provide uh, Beach Blade 11 times, so uh, we're still seeing a lot more of them providing us assistance uh, than the other way around. Is it, is it because these calls are on the border? No, it's usually because a uh, second call second comes call. in. And, yeah. You know, they've got staffing basically to cover <clears throat> two ambulances, and we've got staffing to cover one, so they can break uh, two people loose. Yeah. come down and provide a transport or, or cover a call for us mm -hmm. and, uh, and you don't have our need, need for us to go the other way nearly as often. Um, we uh, did have the, um, uh, the rookies finished up their academy during the month and now we're into summer so uh, training is probably going to drop off for the next couple of months and then we'll see it pick back up again in the fall. That's pretty much all I have. Any questions for the chief? No, thank you. Okay, on our new business, the first item is the 2014 audit. Uh, should we put her on the line? Is that the idea? Okay. Alex Schwartz, I'm uh, you're on the speaker phone at the uh, Elk Creek uh, Board of Directors meeting. Hi, Alex. How are you? It's Chris Johnson on the line as well. All right, uh, we've gotten to the agenda item for the uh, 2014 <coughs> audit. Uh, do you folks uh, want to say anything at this point? Yeah, you know, first of all, um, Marie and Jeff were terrific during the entire process, so you know, it would not have gone as smooth without their help. Um, and the process seems to get easier every year, so we really appreciate all their efforts on their side to be ready for us and to respond to us in a timely fashion. That, that always helps on our end, so we, we, uh, we really, really appreciate that. Okay, good. In terms of uh, just kind of walking, if you guys have the financial savings in front of you, we um, do not. Some of our uh, we, we don't have that, that. We do not have that in front of us. Uh, if you just want to give us a brief summary, that would be good. We had a email. Yeah, that would be great. And, and none of this obviously yes. should be a surprise to you guys, but you know, we definitely, um, from a, the balance sheet side, we noted an increase in cash due to, due to more revenues coming in, and an increase in capital assets and debt due to you guys purchasing more equipment, and I know that's going to be ongoing for us 2015 as well. Um, but those are the main highlights of the, of the balance sheet. In terms of the um, statement of activities, 
Uh, it really seems the really thing that pops out at us is that you're seem to be really relying more on district activities rather than having to go out and get grants. And by district activities, I mean charges for services as well as property tax rate and other tax revenue. So that's a really great to see that you guys are more self-sustaining. Um, the increase in that position is a great indicator that even though you guys got a lot more funding in, you're still being very conservative in your spending. And that's also indicated in the back where you're you're still under budget by two hundred sixty three thousand dollars in your expenditure. So that was a great great uh, indicator. Um, even more into detail, we saw revenues go up. Total revenues go up twenty six percent, but your total expenses only went up eight percent. So that's that's always a great barometer of the health of an organization and, and the strategic leadership as well. Um, that's really at a high level uh, detail about about the, the financial statements. You know, we can we're happy to go into more detail on anything specific that you guys want to go into. Uh, one of one of the things we definitely want to mention that has changed from the last draft that you guys saw is footnote ten, which essentially the reason that changed was because you the Tipper had leases expire in twenty fifteen. But when we look deeper into the agreements, each one of these leases, one for Verizon and one for T-Mobile, had five-year automatic renewals that that got right when they expired, unless unless T-Mobile or Verizon canceled them first. So we utilized that information and then we added this schedule in to extend all the stuff, all these leases back to 2020. So that's that's the only change in the in the draft that you guys were sent before. Uh, anybody on the board have any questions about the audit? No, I appreciate the summary. Yeah, and then our, our role tonight is to uh, approve the draft pending no changes and we're waiting on signatures, is that correct? Yes, yeah, we're just waiting on a couple of things. Uh, Matt Bierbauer, who's the partner on the engagement, was out of town this week, so it's going to be really difficult for us to go final in that regard. So we, we should be able to get a final final copy of you guys next week and then be able to be on time and not have to extend it to state. All right, that's good. Uh, okay. Uh, if there are no further questions, I'd like to move that we approve the draft audit um, as stated, uh, provided uh, there are no changes other than um, waiting a couple of signatures uh, and that that audit would be available to us in time to, to file without an extension. Second that. Okay, any discussion on that motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Uh, any other comments from the auditors? We do have a, um, another report called a viewpoint where we just give you some information about some upcoming changes in accounting uh, regulations and um, some areas that you did well in this year as far as implementing past year suggestions. So that will also be coming when you get the financial statements. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for your time and your service. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. have a good night. Bye-bye. Yep. Okay, any other questions on the audit? Okay, everybody's clear on good. it. Right. Okay, that'll take us to the next item, the Colorado State Mutual Aid Agreement. Okay, after um, about a year of work, uh, the uh, State Mutual Aid Agreement um, uh, went to uh, a meeting of the uh, general uh, assembly of the fire chiefs in Vail um, last month. I uh, presented that to them and uh, did not have any uh, changes requested and uh, generally a uh, very favorable response uh, from the, the chiefs throughout the state. Uh, formal adoption um, uh, by the uh, or formal recommendation uh, by the uh, State Chiefs Association for all departments to adopt it is going to be uh, happening next Friday. However, uh, at this point there will be no changes to it, so we can go ahead and move to um, approve uh, the entering into the Colorado Agreement for, for Fire Mutual Aid. Uh, generally speaking, this uh, mutual aid agreement does not commit the, the, the district to 
uh, any mutual aid. It, it simply allows that if we do participate in mutual aid, that there are standardized uh, terms for the length of time that we would provide mutual aid, uh, who is responsible for uh, liability and um, expenses, and uh, what is reimbursable and what is borne by the providing agency. Uh, the, um, the mutual aid agreement was, has been reviewed uh, by actually three different law firms and uh, despite the fact they all wanted to change you know, this word to that word, uh, we, we managed to get through that with uh, agreement on the, on the language as it stands and uh, so at this time I would request uh, a motion to uh, enter into the uh, Colorado State Mutual Aid Agreement. So, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Chief, do you know how many uh, states have a similar agreement to this, just out of curiosity? Um, the, the states that are, that participate in the, um, uh, uh, what's called the uh, Mid-America Mutual Aid Compact have, um, Basically, there's one mutual aid agreement that now uh, encompasses many departments uh, from Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, uh, and Wisconsin. And it's the, the largest one. Then the state of California has a single statewide one. And most other states uh, do not. So this is, uh, this is kind of progressive in terms of having a, a um, you know, an attempt to have just one agreement instead of having multiples of agree agreements uh, around the area. Uh, so we're we're one of the we're moving to be one of the leaders in the country in terms of having an effective and, and consistent mutual aid program. That's what I thought. That's that's well done. Thank you. Any other new business from the board? Uh, the only thing I'd like to let the board know about, um, I received a call from Ann Terry, the executive director of the Special Districts Association, and requested uh, myself uh, and Chief McLaughlin to attend uh, the conference and asked if we would put on a panel discussion that we developed on how well Elk Creek has done to attract and recruit not only volunteer, but also paid firefighters. And uh, also would like us to talk about some of the good labor management things that have been done between the Colorado State <laughs> firefighters and the Colorado professional firefighters. Uh, chose uh, us to, to put that on uh, because of the recognition of how well the Oak Creek Fire Protection District is operating amongst all of the special districts. Yeah, Congratulations. Yes, Thank well you. Thank so, you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a pretty big thing. Yeah. So we'll be uh, working on that and putting a panel together, a panel discussion for the SDA conference in September. Wonderful. When is it going to be? In September. September. So uh, just more for you and me to do in our spare time. <laughs> yeah. uh, any other new business? Okay, seeing none. Uh, any old business? Seeing none. Any citizens' issues? Sharon? Turn the camera around. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, on behalf of the Friends of Staunton State Park Board of Directors, I would like to invite all of Elk Creek to come to our Marmot Fest this month, July 18th and 19th, so that you can come and enjoy some fun activities at the park for a change instead of having to rescue people who've fallen and <laughs> things like that. Bring your families. We're going to have adopt a marmots so you can get the cute little stuffed animals for your kids and fun activities in education and history. Just show the 18th. July 18th and 19th from 10 to 4. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was wondering why that was there. Um, any other citizens' issues? Okay, seeing none, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We went on to it. It's too fast. We went too fast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we are adjourned at. 1839.